What's up, everyone, and welcome back to Brandon's Face, the podcast about a playlist. My name is Jonathan Beardsley, and as always, I'm joined by Brandon. It's gonna be May. How you doing, buddy? Doing well, buddy. How are you? <laughs> I'm good. Sorry. It the the in sync memes are going on already, and you had the revelation of your first two concerts being in sync concerts. So I had to leave with that. I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> um. Man, we have a lot to get into, but before we do, please like, follow, subscribe, make a blood sacrifice in the name of whatever you feel the need to do to support us. We really appreciate it. Uh, anything you want to say before we get into it? Uh, no, I think we're good. Are you sure? I think I'm sure? sure. I'm sure. Are you sure? I'm going to give you five more minutes to think about it. No. <laughs> All right, let's, let's dive in, buddy. We have a busy week and I'm very, very excited. So first up, we have a new single from Joyce Manor called Gotta Let It Go. I want to go first on this one because I had never heard this band before. And I imagine you have, correct? You've never heard Joyce Manor? No. (laughs) I'm I'm blown away right now. I saw that this song got posted and honest to God, I was like, that sounds like the name of a band I would like. (laughs) So I clicked (laughs) it and I was like, turns out they were right. Yeah, they were right. So, uh, Yeah, I don't have much to say other than that little bit, but I I did really enjoy this. It's very brief. Um, Their new album is going to be called 40 Ounces to Fresno, which is just (laughs) fucking incredible. That's that's Uh, actually really great. Yeah, that's that's like naming your podcast Brandon's face, like definitely our type of band. Uh, uh, What were your thoughts on this? Did you enjoy it? Oh, yeah, man. These guys just kind of have that sound. Um, I like basically all of their music and uh, this song is great. Fuck yeah. Uh, what's an album of theirs I should check out? I'm just kind of blown away that you've like never heard of Joy. Like that just, I don't know, man. I, dude, the 2010s were kind of a weird era. What would you call this? Post-hardcore? Is that what this is? I'd put it more in the emo camp, but sure. Okay. Okay. Yeah. No, I feel like I just ignored a lot of that in the 2010s, to be honest with you. Yeah. S slash T. That's the album. Okay. I'll throw that on my listen to next and I'll let you know what I think. Cool. All right, man. Next up, we got a new one from Pusha T called Neck and Wrist featuring Jay-Z produced by Pharrell. Holy God, man. Uh, Did you listen to this on some good speakers? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Because That's funny that you say that because I did not the first time and I really didn't like it. And then I I listened to it in the car and I was like, wait a second. Yeah, yeah. No, it was the exact same thing for me. I was like, something's missing on this, but like. I I like the lyrics. I like what I'm hearing from the instrumental. Just a layer was missing. Once I like threw on some heavy bass speakers, I was like, this is fucking great. Um, Did you see what his album is going to be called? Uh, I did. For some reason, it's I'm blanking. It's almost dry. That's what what it is. Yeah. (laughs) I don't even know what to infer from that. Like at all, but I'm still no release date. He announced the album title with the first batch of tour dates he's doing. So, I think it's coming sooner rather than later. Exciting. Yeah, hopefully, hopefully. All right, let's move on to one I'm very, very curious to know what you thought of. It's a new one from Schoolboy Q called Soccer Dad. Give me your thoughts. My man, I really liked the lyrics and the first about 25 seconds of the beat. I was like, yeah, this is awesome. And then it just kept going. And I was like, oh, I don't yeah, think I like, like this. <laughs> Yeah, it's just like, it's the do something meme. It's like, evolve right. a little bit. Um, his flow is great. I don't know if you saw, did I send you like the announcement for this when it came out? I don't know, probably. It's been a crazy okay. week, man. Um, aesthetically, he's doing this like old timey cuphead story of Jay-Z music or story of OJ Jay-Z music video type animation style for this single. And I like that. Um, I just wish I liked, liked the song a little more. This these bars over a different beat would definitely be my t- my cup of tea, but this is this is not I feel a, like this is not beat, even a cup of tea. I feel like the beat starts good. I just felt like it needed to go into something a little bit different, even if it was chopping up that beat. But I don't know, just chopping something up that about beat it. or like calling back to the horns after you know, like at, in the chorus versus you know, just like a laid back trap beat during the verse would have been like so yeah. much better for me. I agree. Uh, what's your favorite Schoolboy Q album? Um, the one with the mask. 
uh oxymoron that's i think that's one. that one that one is phenomenal phenomenal i think that one has the best songs but i think i think blank face if you revisit that one you're gonna realize that's a masterpiece that was kind of slept on i will do that i will do that oh yeah all right man next up we got another one you threw on here by rolling blackouts coastal fever called my echo you want to talk about this uh yeah i sure do uh this is just fucking good music man i don't know what else to say i really dig this i've really di- i've really been digging all of the all of the singles from this album endless rooms i think it's called and mm-hmm. uh i am just excited for some deep cuts at this point man we've gotten we've gotten a lot of singles and i am just i'm stoked man what did you think about this one i thought it was very solid i thought it was groovy catchy the album should be good based on everything we've heard so far. Like you, I'm excited for the deep cuts, but that drops May 6th and that day is shaping up to get pretty fucking crazy. Cause now we have an album from them, a new album from arcade fire, an album from LMA, an album from Silverstein and a new album from war paint dropping that day. Yeah. I'm a big fan of all of those. So May 6th is going to be a day. Yes. Cinco to Brandon. <laughs> <laughs> all right <Stupid>. so, <laughs> thank you uh, this next one is called i almost wanted to say cosmic putrefaction but it's putrefaction yes okay sure yes okay it's called souls upheaval debris i'm gonna let you know what i thought of that please i thought it was fantastic i'm a big fan of rhythmic death metal like this kind of reminds me of like job for a cowboy or winds of plague and I really can't believe they only have 2,000 monthly listeners. They're definitely underrated. My I'm man. Just, <laughs> I'm glad we had some new metal to break down, but that's, yes. that's criminally underrated. <laughs> yes. Thank you. This this is just absolute chaos, but they bring it together so well. I'm so glad you – I was expecting you to just completely arch spire this, and I'm so glad you liked this one. No, yeah. this is rhythmic. This no, has melody to it. It's still chaos to me, but fuck, man, this is so good. And I honestly, I can't tell you where I found Cosmic Putrefaction. I can't tell you why I follow them on Spotify, but apparently I do. And uh, it popped up on my uh, on my release little notification bell. And fuck, man, I loved it. So I threw it on. And you know how starved I've been for metal. I won't be surprised if they're from Australia. I really (laughs) won't be. (laughs) One can only hope, John. (laughs) <laughs> all right man let's move on to a new one i was very surprised by a new one from big gigantic and code of the friend called deja vu this was really great i i really like hearing code on different types of beats what about you uh i i fucking love this uh i was getting kind of worried about him because we hadn't heard from code of the friend in about i don't know three weeks and that means he's mm-hmm. you know, either on vacation or <laughs> he's dead so i'm really glad that he's here he's alive we got we got new a new collab with big gigantic which is kind of a big deal for him yeah i would imagine so i actually saw them at one of the what were those major laser festival things called the like God, what the hell was that called? You know what I'm talking about. That little music festival tour that they did. I saw a big gigantic at one of those and they were really, really good. I, you just unlocked a memory that I forgot that I had. I don't know what they're called, but I do remember that they did that. Wow. Yes. My wife and I went to one mostly to see Dylan Francis, but that was also the first set ever by Jack. U. very interesting. Interesting. Yeah. I yeah. saw, I, we, we saw Jack U at Coachella, some dude, collapsed in front of us i chose uh we we saw it everybody was really worried but he was fine he got back up um and, as is uh, tradition we were in the beer garden watching them so but uh it was funny man we went to hard summer 2015 and mm-hmm. uh jackie was headlining and i decided to go see ratatat instead and oh boy am i so glad that 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 i chose that because I'm Great not. I, w- I was never a big fan of Jack U, but it was uh, an interesting show, nonetheless. Yeah, that festival that we saw them at was one stage, or else I would not have watched them. Honestly, it was mostly just Diplo emceeing. It wasn't a whole lot of like them DJing together. They had no original songs at this point out either. It was literally like their first unveiling. So oh, it was cool. cool to see for that purpose. But I didn't know you went to that show. Music, that was like a big deal. Yeah, it was in a it was in the Petco 
park parking lot. It was very <laughs> uncomfortable, but a Petco um, parking lot. A Petco Park, which is the San Diego Padres no, stadium. No, I'm refusing to believe that it was Petro, that was it was Petco Park parking lot. It was a We Petco have a carnival park. going on in our Target parking lot over here, so it might go on, dude. I don't know. What a time to be alive. Welcome to 2022, everybody. <laughs> uh, before we move on, it's really funny that you say we haven't heard from Coda because he posted on Instagram that he's dropping a new single from his new album this week. <laughs> Well, you so know, there's more on the way. Welcome back, Coda. We missed you. Yes, we missed you. We missed you. <laughs> All right, man. Let's talk about some fucking Chemical Brothers. Oh, they boy. released a deluxe edition of Dig Your Own Hole, and you threw on this demo from March 6, 1996 of Electro Bank. Holy God. I listened to this like 10, 20 times this week. I don't know. It's fucking good. I love it. I love it when legendary EDM artists release old shit like this, like Daft Punk with Alive 97. It sounds just as mind-blowing to me now as it did the first time I heard it, you know? Yes. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm getting like, chills, like, just thinking about this song. <laughs> yes. Yes, dude. Like, we always say that they're one of the greatest EDM acts of all time, and they are obviously, but where I think they might even have more of a case for number one than Daft Punk or Justice or anyone else is their output rate in comparison to those. Like, They've just they never stopped. No, they could have stopped after their first four or five and had the same legacy forever cemented that they have now, honestly. But they continue to push the bar forward to this very, like, no geography is fucking incredible. Isn't it? They're like, just, it's... they're unreal, man. <laughs> they're, they're unreal. And I want to thank you for making me, like, not just realize, oh, they're, they're pretty good. Like, you were like, no, they're great. And you need to realize this. So <laughs> thank you. You're welcome. Um, man, I really love how raw this is. You hear, like, you kind of hear, if you listen to this and then the version, the album version that came out, you kind of hear their production process a little bit. And I love how raw this sounds. It sounds like they made it in a garage on like a torrented version of Fruity Loops, but clearly it's not. And I, I just, I, I love it. I love them. And uh, Dig Your Own Hole is, in my opinion, an underrated Chemical Brothers album. Oh, so much so. A like Block of- Rock and Beats is an iconic song. Oh, for <laughs> the sure. The album itself isn't as regarded as highly as that song tends to be, especially in compared to what no surrender and all of those, but yeah, I surrender think it's just gets, as good. Surrender gets all the praise because, and don't get me wrong. I, oh, I, said I, no I, surrender. I, surrender. I, I even texted you um, the other, I think it was like a month ago and I was like, you should listen to surrender front to back again. Cause it's a you did. masterpiece um, because it is, but I think and what's funny is I just had, Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Love that. Love yeah. That. Great minds or something like that. But yeah, I am uh, I'm a huge Chemical Brothers fan. I'm glad we got some uh, a demo from 1996 and uh, I thought it was really good. Did you get the vinyl? Uh, I already have the vinyl. So, oh, I think I they're doing like a special edition one for the anniversary. I don't need that. I only need two more uh, Chemical Brothers albums to complete what I consider their. Do you still need Surrender? Oh, no. Um, Okay. I I thought for a while you were missing a big one. You're. I need, uh, I need come with us and push the button. Those are the two. Push the button's the one you don't have. Come on, Brandon. But see, that's the thing. I ha- I do have Brotherhood, which has galvanize and push uh and, and push the button on it. So. So when you see the add to cart, you just don't push the button, or what? <laughs> no, I just don't want to pay the Dad incredible jokes. resale value. So I'm going to wait until I they agree. repress it because I, 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 I like vinyl, but I don't like vinyl seventy five dollars worth. So. That's one of my favorite Chemical Brothers songs, but it always reminds me of the Andy Samberg SNL DJ skit, the when will the bass drop, when will the bass drop, <laughs> <laughs> that damn button. All right, let's move on, buddy. I, one more got, thing. I really, do oh, please, want, please. I, I really do want push the button, mainly because it would mean that I would finally have the salmon dance on, uh, on vinyl. So yes, that, that was my yes. last thought there. No, you need the salmon dance on vinyl. Um, all right. Somebody make that happen for Brandon, please. Okay. We got a new one from Silverstein featuring Andrew Newfeld from comeback kid called die alone. What'd you think of this? All right. So 
my last two uh, single reviews for the for the Silverstein album rollout has been sounds a little overproduced, still very much Silverstein, and I love it. Um, this did not sound too overproduced. It is exactly as heavy as it needs to be, maybe even a little more heavy than it needs to be. And it feels very <laughs> old school Silverstein, and I fucking loved it. I love the mix. Um, this is it's hardcore, man. There's no post about this song. This is hardcore. Yeah, it has the fucking vocalist of Comeback Kid. Of course, it's hardcore. <laughs> have you ever seen Comeback Kid live? I have not. Oh my god, incredible! Like there was there was a time where a very brief time where I was into hardcore, if you can believe it or not, and I was going to throw down shows and Comeback Kid shows. I think my favorite Amazing. of that time was Stick to Your Guns. Big fan of their early stuff. Oh yeah, um, but yeah, I I love this. I I thought. This is the heaviest I think I've ever heard them. You might have better examples of heavier stuff that they've done, but I really enjoyed it. Um, you said Silverstein might be one of the most consistent bands of all time the other day when we were texting. And I think they're just making your point easier to prove with every release, man. There's no way to prove me wrong, dude. Every release. Uh, in fact, I have a, a coworker who um, he was like, "Tell me, tell me a Silverstein album to listen to." And I was, uh, and I was like, "Dude, you know, one of their one of their underrated albums is um, fuck. Why is it? Why is it escaping me now? All of a sudden, it's underrated. I talk about it all the time. Um, this is how the wind shifts. Okay. And um, that album has just banger after banger after banger and it is uh, for some reason forgotten somehow i i don't know man it's got the the massachusetts song on it it's got it's got it's just banger it came out in banger. 2013 i think that's why it got slept on it was a very weird transitional time yes yes you're right knife party and had just released their debut album and i i, I understand I think that you're a more hardcore fan than most of bands. Like I was very deep into the scene, but I pretty much abandoned fallout boy, my chem and taking back Sunday, like after the first three, four albums and didn't even like, like, I don't even know if I like post 2010s <laughs> fallout boy. I've never <laughs> listened to it. You know, I've you heard would. the radio stuff and I do not like that. I don't think um, you would. Yeah, exactly. Uh, you, the used are a little different. I've liked the stuff they've done throughout the 2010s. But yeah, man, I feel like you're a little more patient. So you tend to find the gems of albums like that when others don't. That is a huge compliment, John. Thank you. You're welcome, buddy. All right, man. <laughs> let's move on to some more fantastic music because this week is unreal. A new single from Interpol called Tony. I was not expecting new Interpol at all, but I'm very happy to have it. And I know it's super cliche to say, but like everything they just make sounds timeless to me. You know what I mean? They out Interpol themselves every time they release new music. It's kind of yes. wild. Yes. There was something I saw online the other day where it was like, every time Wes Anderson's coming out with a movie, I think, is this going to be like a Wes Anderson movie? And he replies, <laughs> this is going to be the most fucking Wes Anderson movie you've ever seen. <laughs> and I think Interpol is very, very similar. <laughs> oh, man. Yes. Yeah. Like, I think that's the best way to articulate it. I'm super fucking excited for their new album and we're already going to have a new song of theirs to cover next week. I'm super excited. Welcome to the album rollout, John. The song is fucking great. Came with a music video. I'm going to throw that in the show notes just because it's, uh, it's pretty neat. Uh, the new song that we'll cover next week also has a music video with it. Um, I don't really, maybe I'm just artistically disinclined or something, but I, I don't really see, how the two connect but they do kind of, it's the same actors i don't know we'll talk about it next week um after everybody has a chance to review the or watch both music videos but i really liked this song and it is it's interpol what can i say fucking love yeah their new album the other side of make believe drops july 15th we'll Which definitely be reviewing album that title by the way oh fantastic fucking fantastic uh can't wait for that one we'll talk more about them next week yes sir all right, we have a new one from Alice in Wonderland called Forever. Was this different than you were expecting to? Yes. Um, in fact, I'm gonna I'm just gonna jump right in because we, we've yeah. talked about Alice in Wonderland um, and her last singles uh, a number of times. Uh, I think mm -hmm. we've reviewed all of them, uh, and um, 
I've really been enjoying the textures that she's playing with. And this song really hit me kind of weird. I was like, wait, what, 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 who is this? I think I just had the playlist on and then I, and then mm-hmm. I, and then I heard it and I was like, who is this? And then, oh shit, this is Alice in Wonderland. This is as, this is if feed me, feed me's music and Elohim's music came together. Interesting. That that that's the I, I vibe I got. That way. No, totally. I was getting like a Porter vibe, but yeah, no, you're you're very dead on. I it, could see Porter. It, I could see Porter. I I I honestly feel like there's going to be a discussion to be had on the influence like Porter has in changing the trends of modern EDM because I think he's under recognized in that regard. But that's a separate convo. I I thought this track was fucking great, and I think that the more she experiments, the better she's getting. Honestly, this like she used to just be, you could rely on her for some fucking absolute bangers. And now she's showing us a lot, lot more than that. I don't think this will translate well for a casual listen, like for somebody just clicking on it, hoping for a quick, good song. But if you can immerse yourself in this, it's great. And this is going to be a monster track of hers live. Yes, absolutely. The bass is crazy. Oh my God. Yeah, overwhelming at times if you're listening on really heavy speakers. Yeah, well, I will say um, her experimentation is definitely paying off, and I can't wait to see more, hear more. Yeah, I think the album is going to be called Loner, but she still hasn't given us a release date, so hopefully that comes soon. Sweet. All right, man, we got a new one from R&B queen Chloe, or soon to be, I guess, (laughs) called treat me and i'm just gonna dive in because dear god man her falsetto runs in this song are unreal like she's only released two singles since going solo but both singles are built around samples talking about asses so uh (laughs) there's a lot of rumors she went solo because her sister didn't want to do overly sexual r&b like this if true i respect both of them for doing what they felt was right because she's one of the few artists you can actually compare to Beyonce. They've opened for her mo- multiple times and are kind of viewed as protégés of her. Cool. And I think if she keeps releasing songs this good, she's going to be huge on her own eventually. What did you think of it, though? <laughs> My notes are, this is interesting. I really like it. Yeah. Both of her songs have been two and a half minutes, so you're getting very, very small sample sizes. But I think if and when we ever get an album that I think this might be your speed because it's a little more up tempo, a little more dangerous, not not as long winded and drawn out as some of the stuff you dislike. Yeah, I'm uh, I'm I'm curious to hear more. Yes, you are by curious to hear more. All right, let's move on to a new one from Carl Cox, Fat Boy Slim, and Dan Diamond called Speed Trials on Acid. You said something one of the last times we talked about Carl Cox that really stuck with me. He's one of the best DJs of all time, but his productions just never do anything for us. Like, I don't know what it's been. That's just generally the case. They're always good, but he's... He's not a top tier producer the way he is a DJ, but I got really, really excited when I saw him and Fatboy Slim together on this. But honestly, it's just not my type of track. I was kind of hoping for a little bit more. I'm not a huge fan of the spoken word house thing. What about you? Yeah, so I added it obviously before I listened to it because it said Mm -hmm. Carl Cox and Fatboy Slim. And I was like, oh, bet. And speed trials on acid. <laughs> right. Like, it's just, okay. Like, that's definitely going to be my speed. Uh, I was like, Carl Cox proved me wrong. And then when I finally got to listen to it, I was like, oh. Um, yeah, man. Carl Cox is in front of a DJ table is unstoppable. Like, I genuinely don't think that any club in Ibiza would want to stop him. I think he will just keep playing until 7, 8 in the morning, you know? God but, bless him. Um, yeah, this production style is not is just not it yeah i wasn't digging it but i still haven't seen him live i really really need to do that one day that's on my bucket list what Uh, about you do you have any desire to see him live which one fat boy slim or carl Carl cox Cox. um i would love to see him if it was at all convenient but i will not be flying to spain to see carl cox or miami 
not a big Florida fan. Uh, Fat Boy Slim is playing right down the street from me uh, uh, this weekend, and it has been confirmed that Fat Boy Slim will be playing in the Yuma Tent at Coachella, which I think ah. is going to be fucking crazy. You going to do Coachella this year? Yes. Hopefully they stream this set. I'm not going to the actual festival, but we are. Uh, the wife and I always make it a good time, man. You know, we dance and we just we have we have a good time with it. So, as you know, my wife notoriously <laughs> hates Coachella, so she probably won't be dancing with me, but I will be watching. I'll just, text you about it. <laughs> just like I'm wrong about Radiohead, <laughs> your wife is allowed to be wrong about Coachella. So. <laughs> I'm not going to have that conversation. I'll let you do that. But uh, all right, let's move on. We can do, oh my gosh, man, a new one from Spore. Holy shit. Let me be. Please, please go. I know I know you're dying. All right. Uh, wow. <laughs> I don't I, like I, th- this song kind of left me speechless, man. My first note is wow. Yeah, wow. <laughs> Just wow. Yeah. Um, <laughs> So Spore is, if anybody doesn't know, is the alter ego of uh, the alter moniker, I guess you could call it, of Feed Me, uh, otherwise known as John Gooch. And um, Spore had released an album called Caligo um, on their own label, Soto Voce. Um, But this is Spore's first release on Mousetrap Records, which is monumentous for a number of reasons, because we'll probably get a Spore album on Mousetrap on Records, Mousetrap. which yep. means that Joel will have some of his fingers in the production, unless he really just wants to sit back and watch John do the do his thing. But oh man, this uh, this is Spore. The it's it's incredible, man. Dude, yes, I I don't usually fuck with drum and bass that much, but this is so good. Uh, this is also the first track off of his upcoming four song EP. I don't know if you knew that. Oh, I did not know that. So that will be the first EP, at least on Mousetrap. I'm really looking forward to it. If they ever do another Blade movie, he needs to do the score for it. Like in its entirety. Yeah. Or if they do DMT the musical, he would be perfect for it. (laughs) DMT the musical. Image Spongle. (laughs) (laughs) That is definitely a musical I'd go to. (laughs) Might smell weird in the crowd there, but I think we'll I think we'll all be okay. (laughs) <laughs> Give it 20 minutes. Oh, my gosh. That's a combo for another day as well. Um, we, okay, let's move on. We got a new one from The Format called Your Name. I know nothing about this band, so please give me some context. Okay, so, I well, number one, I didn't really like this song as much as as, as much as I wanted to, but the format. Um, so I got really into pop punk and this kind of indie melding thing way back in the day, they released an album called interventions and lullabies in 2013, uh, 2003 rather Jesus. Um, Mm -hmm. and I'm pretty sure it's one of, uh, they stopped where they put out a live album in 2020 and then they put out another live album in 2016. They had like a, like a demo sessions album in 20 in 2016 and the first, and then they had like a B sides and rarities album in 2007. And the really, the only real two albums that they've put out studio albums are uh, interventions and lullabies in 2003 and um, dog problems in 2006. Um, the first single is a song, uh, off of their first album, Interventions and Lullabies. That is just the catchiest shit in the world. You immediately listen to it after we're done talking, John, because you'll understand why I just immediately threw this, this song on here. Uh, this song kind of sucks though. At, uh, that kind of like, uh, that kind of like weird guitar thing that they do around a minute and 30 seconds just kind of ruins it for me. But, um, curious what your thoughts were. I threw it on, so I didn't want to take it off. So I, I didn't like the track very much, but I did look a little further into it. I just wanted some more context on your familiarity with them. Uh, I, apparently this track was supposed to be on their Snails EP back in 2007, but didn't make it on there by accident somehow. So they just oh. decided to release it now. <laughs> Great. So we're not getting new format music. Great. Okay. Uh, no, but they do seem to be active. Every time you throw a, a band on here, I follow them from our Instagram. So they yes. are pretty active on there right now. Cool. Well, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm, I definitely want you to go listen to Interventions and Lullabies. It's a great album, and it's something that uh, I got. I just got really into way back in the day when I was really just exploring pop punk. 
Fuck yeah, man. Well, I just threw it on my listen to next, so I will do that and, immediately. And, and I say that, and I know that the format isn't really pop punk, and if it is, it's more pop than punk, but it's kind of just pop rock, but it was that album and um, the Jack's Mannequin albums that were just on repeat for a long time for me, so. Okay, for yeah. sure. I love Jack's Mannequin. We've already talked about him a few times, but I have yes. to say, every time you bring it up, loves of, Jack's Mannequin. Of course, everything in transit is <laughs> just incredible, man. Beautiful. Just beautiful. Oh, man. That might actually reshape one of my lists that I'm working on for another podcast. But anyways, <laughs> let's go from the format to cutting people's fucking heads off with a new <laughs> one from Decapitated and Ginger called Hello Death. This is this is just fucking brutal and heavy and relentless. And I really enjoyed it, actually. Um, at first, I thought it was going to be a little too fast for me, but I dug it, man. I really enjoyed it. Yeah, I uh, really, really enjoyed this one. Uh, she has just a way with her voice that's just special, John. And it really blends well with the dude from Decapitated. And uh, yeah, man, uh, I I like metal, John. I know you do, Brandon. And I'm very happy we're getting more and more of it to review every week. Yes, all right, let's move on to this one from Peyote Ugly called Melting Sea. So again, never heard this band before, but I like them based on this song. Uh, the way they combine the guitars and keys to make kind of a weird psychedelic indie rock sound is really cool. I also like that their name is a play on Coyote Ugly, a movie I watched many times in my teen years. Why? Um, what did you think of this? Song? Why'd Why? you watch that? But I'm just kidding. The water pitcher scene, Brandon. The water. I'm a big John Goodman fan. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> oh man. Okay. <laughs> Please go. All right. So uh, I have a, I have a fun story about this band. As of right now, they only have 269 monthly listeners on Spotify, which is criminally, which is just criminal. This band is incredible. Uh, they released an EP. Um, I think it's called Jackdaw, although that might just be one of the names of the songs on that EP. Um, love the name. Peyote Ugly is just fantastic. Um, but uh, I found this band alongside another band, and they are a Pacific Northwest band. I know this because when we went to Seattle to go visit some friends, we were having lunch at a where was it dinner? It was one of the, I think it was lunch, late afternoon meal, and uh, we were having lunch at this bar, and they had a um, they had a poster up. Uh, of like some show that had happened like weeks prior mm -hmm. and it had this band and another band on it. And so I, rem I just, I jotted it down and went back a few weeks later to go look at it and found just incredible music, man. It was this band and then a band called shark legs, which are, are also good, but I like peyote ugly a little better. Yes. You actually gave me a vinyl of shark legs. I don't yep. know if you remember that. I do because remember you that. Got duplicates. I got happened. duplicates. Yeah. <laughs> Oh man, that's a great story. You you would do that. You would be like, "Who's this local band?" <laughs> Just look them up way later and end up end up liking them. That's that's incredible. Yeah, I love is, that about you, Brandon. Well, thank you. Uh, but it's it's also like really good music. Like I've done that a number. No, of they're times great. Been like uh, this band is awful, but no, I really like these. Yeah, they were they were good. Thanks for showing me them. You're okay, welcome. Man, let's move on to a new one from Solomon. And Maceo Plex called, I think, Creature of the Night is what it would translate to, featuring Isolation Berlin. So, I'm a little let down by this one. What about you? You know, I've been let down by a lot of Solomon stuff um, lately. Yeah, you're right. I didn't think about that, but you're right. I I just couldn't get into it. Like, I... It makes me feel like I'm the sober guy at the rave listening to it. <laughs> the sober, the sober 45 year old at the rave, right? <laughs> Not that old yet. Shit. Well, that's how it made me feel. Like, am I, oh, am yeah. I, am oh I, yeah. No, it totally made me feel that way. Yes, you're right. Am, 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 I, am I supposed to like this? Is this what the kids are liking nowadays? <laughs> um, <laughs> hey, man, watch my back. <laughs> <laughs> that is a great story. Um, all right. But uh, it's funny because I really like and it, so I separated this track. Um, uh, you can hear the Solomon parts. Don't like those. You can really hear the Maceoplex parts. Really like those. So 
Yeah, if we could just turn the dial a little bit more towards the Maceo Plex side, I guess it might have been a better song, but <laughs> is what it is. It is what it is. <laughs> All right, man, let's move on to this new one you threw on here from I Am Dynamite, one word, called Corner Street. <laughs> Thank you for speeding uh, through that. It, I don't know how else to articulate that, but... Uh, I Am Dynamite. Yes, yeah, so... I'm sure you'll give me some context, but my notes are brief, so I'll just say I'm not sure if I like his voice or not, but it's a good song. So I, um, back in, I don't know, 2015, maybe 2016, I went on this, everybody keeps saying Brock is dead, but it can't be, kind of kind of Spotify mm -hmm. dive, right? Okay. And I found a number of bands this way. Um, and this is one of those bands, and I followed them on Spotify. They have an album that they put out in 2012 that was called Super Mega Fantastic. I'm sorry, Super Mega Fantastic. And um, Love it. Yeah, and uh, it was, it's really good. I also am kind of meh on his, on his voice, but that doesn't mean that it's bad. I don't know. I really like their music, though, and I am a fan of this band, so I threw it on because it's a new single, and I think it's an album rollout. Well, I'm definitely down to check out the album when it releases. Nice. Man, that reminded me of an Aqua Teen episode where all the villains join together and they're trying to think of a name and somebody's like, super, super awesome villains forever. <laughs> and <laughs> ever since then, I've wanted to name something that. But it eludes me. So let's move on to this new one from Maggie Rogers called That's Where I Am. Have you ever heard Maggie Rogers before this? <laughs> What's funny is my notes say, so this is Maggie Rogers. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm surprised you've like been in the Phoebe Bridgers side of music and hadn't come across Mag Maggie Rogers yet. Right. Um, I became a pretty big fan of hers after hearing her track Alaska a few years ago. Throw that on your listen to next. Will do. her approach to pop is just very unique and the way she uses her voice as an instrument is really special i've never listened to an album of hers in full to be honest with you but her debut got a ton of critical acclaim which is where i'm sure you saw her name pop up a few times before she just started a rollout for her new album titled surrender and i think it's set to release july 29th as far as my thoughts on the track, I, I love it, man. Her voice sounds great. Her harmonies are like hypnotic. Her instrumental is fantastic. It's all top notch. What did you think? I really liked this, man. Um, I've heard the name Maggie Rogers like a thousand times and I just never, I don't know, never got the itch. So thanks for yeah, throwing it on because I really like it. But I've, I've heard the name like a thousand times. I'm not quite at the iconic level yet, but I think she's fairly popular, right? I mean, she's got, yeah, th 3.8 million yes. listeners so she's definitely fairly popular yes multiple songs over 100 million plays she's she's doing well for herself and i think this is going to be a good album based on this song alone but she's very very creative and i think the more you listen to her the more you'll you'll get excited for her new shit as well cool yeah i'm sure i'll like it fuck yeah man all right man let's move on to this new one from I think it's Bia, I'm guessing that's how you pronounce it, called London featuring J. Cole. I'm dying to know your thoughts on this. I did not like this song. I really liked the beat, didn't like basically anything else. You didn't like J. Cole's British accent? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I mean, it was okay, but you know, at some point you've got to kind of meld into the background of what you're doing and, you know, give them I props. Agree, yeah. Uh, I wasn't a big fan of this song either, man. I, I thought J. Cole did okay. The the staring at money like Mellow stares at Rihanna line was pretty great. But other than that, I don't know. It, he does a good job. He's pretty diverse, does a few flow changes. The British accent, I don't know if I would have kept that. I think it's one of his better features. I just think it's a shame it's with her. Yeah. Or on was, this song, I should say. It was, eh, I didn't like it. I'm sure she's a lovely woman. Don't know her. <laughs> All right, let's move on to this last single of the week. We got, I just threw this on here because it's featuring Tone Sith. I'll be straight up about that. This is a girl I've never heard, Skylar Stecker, and the song's called What's Good. It's 
pretty generic as far as R&B duets go, but it's not bad. They both have very, very good voices, obviously, but it's nothing you haven't heard before. I'm just a big fan of his and he doesn't really get a lot of features. So I figured I'd throw it on. Did you enjoy this one at all? Yeah. I mean, like you said, it was kind of generic, but I really like Tone Stith also, thanks to you. So yes, yes. And he put out like two EPs last year. So I would bank on at least one before this year's over. Nice. Yes. You ready to move on to albums, buddy? We have so many albums. Let's move on. Yes. We have a gauntlet of albums. Let's get into it. First up, we got Camila Cabello with a new one. I'm sure I butchered that pronunciation, by the way. Familia. Do you want me to dive in first here? Go ahead. All right. So I don't think we've ever talked about her before. Um, Not once. Have we? Okay. So my wife and I really enjoyed her self-titled album back in 2018. We played it into the fucking ground so much so that we completely missed her album that came out in 2019. Like I still haven't heard that one in full, but I'll get around to it. Eventually I did catch her NPR tiny desk concert recently though. And she was playing some of the newer songs off this album during it. And I, I thought they were good. So I figured I'd throw it on. I, I'm glad I did because I found myself enjoying the album more than I thought I would. I feel like we've been covering a ton of pop lately and I've been getting a little bit burnt out on it, but I found myself coming back to this album more times than I thought I would before the week was over, honestly. And this is a week where we have new albums from Vince Staples and Sid too. <laughs> it's, it's not an album you need to listen to front to back at all to enjoy. I don't really recommend it that way, honestly. It's it's a well-crafted pop album and she does a great job balancing tracks that pay respect to her heritage like La Buena Vida with tracks that should have good pop mainstream success like Psycho Freak and tracks that do a pretty good job blending both of those like Bam Bam or Don't Go Yet which I think are the two main singles but for some reason both sound like Pixar songs to me when I hear them uh lyrically she dives into her separation from Shawn Mendes as well as her past with Fifth Harmony a little bit but it never really goes past the surface I think I don't know I think vocally she sounds great I just don't think the album hits on the same caliber as her first one did with Havana as the single or even the second one with Senorita as the single but I think it's solid front to front to back. It's a six or seven for me. And I think Psycho Freak is my standout so far. Wait a second. How have you, how have is, you received this? This is the same girl that did Havana? Yes. that The one Havana song, right? Yes. The one that was everywhere all the time? Oh, nah, nah. Yeah. Yep. Wow. Okay. Well, I hadn't thought I had heard of Camila Cabello before, but apparently I had. Um, You've heard Senorita. You had to have. It's possible, man, but I just I, I didn't connect the name with anything. But okay. uh, this is a great pop album, I think. Uh, I love, obviously, the Latin elements, and I'm really surprised I had never actually heard the name. I'm sure I've heard the songs, like you said, um, mm-hmm. but I I just never heard the name. Um, I'm going to throw that tiny desk on... Um, yeah, throw it in the show notes. I'm going to throw that in the show notes because I think that, that I think I want to watch that because she was just on SNL. We just watched it last night. Mm-hmm. Um, yep. So I really love the Latin elements. Uh, sonically, this album really varies uh, and really kind of quickly. Um, I think it's only like 35 minutes, this album. Um, it is. Yeah, and, which is why I had no problem throwing it on. <laughs> yeah, it's it goes from like straight up pop to we've got a little bit of rock in there, obviously Latin, and then... I typically don't like genre shifts. We talk about that a lot because I just fucking don't. But uh, I think that it really works. It works really well here. I will say something. Uh, Psycho mm-hmm. Freak is also my standout. It's a, it's a. I put it down as a seven because I did really enjoy this and I went back to it a number of times. I, Willow seems like she's trying so hard to not try hard. And... <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, man. That's well put. Um, That's well put. I don't know, man. I really liked that song, though. So Psycho Freak was my standout. It's a really good one. I get what you're saying, but I think she sounds really good on this song also. So it's like a it's a toss up, man. But I I enjoyed that song and I'm glad that it's being promoted as like the first main single because I think it should do pretty well. It's great. Oh, I think it'll do very well. Yeah. All right, man. Let's move on to this new one from Health Disco 4 Part 2. (laughs) <laughs> what were your thoughts on this? 
Uh, alrighty. So this whole album is very nine inch nails level of experimentation and weirdness, which is mm-hmm. fucking, it's awesome, dude. This whole, this entire album, not and I know that nine inch nails features on, isn't everyone, but that's not what I'm talking about. The whole album as a whole has that kind of experimental sonic, just, it's, it's just, it's exploration of sound that like, doesn't really exist in metal nowadays which i think was really fucking cool um it's heavy where it needs to be it's electronic kind of where it like wants to be and it's like proggy in some points like um on ad 1000 um as an experimental collab project this is very good um i think you know that my standout is the lamb of god one cold blood but i really did like the poppy one the nine inch nails one i really liked the uh uh, the what was it at Ada Rock and there was like some rap in there which was fucking weird. I really liked the whole thing. I gave it um <laughs> I, I gave it an eight and uh, Cold Blood was obviously my standout. Interesting. I I don't know, man. I I I had the same standouts you did, but some of the tracks just didn't hit me very well. Like I didn't enjoy the Play That Boy Zay or the Backwash <laughs> features, and I found the Neighborhood one a very confusing in terms of like the sonic landscape of the album. But everything else I thought was pretty fucking solid, and I think that they always seem to be playing to the level of the artists that they're collaborating with, which could be a good thing or a bad thing. So I think I liked getting something like dark and heavy and different for the sake of variety, but I didn't enjoy this album as much as the singles had me thinking I would. So like you, I think the, the lamb of God one's my favorite. I still enjoyed the album more than I didn't. I just didn't love it. I gave it a six. That's fair. Yeah. Cold blood or isn't everyone. One of those two is my favorite for sure. Yeah. That's super fair, man. I, I think, I think as individual songs, these are all great. Um, But, uh, but yeah, no, I, 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 I dig what you're saying. Yeah. The Poppy one's been growing on me though. That one's a pretty good song too. I'm not I'll a big fan that. of Poppy as a whole, but I did I did like that one. So it's the, it's I think it's the perfect Same. way to open that album. Yeah, I agree. I agree. It starts the album off on a good note, get things running. But I don't I don't know. Just a few of the the feature choices threw me off. I think I looked at part one as well, and I there was some interesting collabs on there. Have you ever listened to that one? I have not. This is the first it real has, full project. There's a JPEG Mafia collab on it and a Soccer Mommy collab on it. So maybe we'll get around to that one one day. I know you like both of them. I do. I do. (laughs) All right, man. Let's move on to a very interesting album. Uh, We got a new one from Jack White called Fear of the Dawn. So (laughs) there's a lot to like about this album. But once again, I think he lets his eccentricities get in the way of making a great album from front to back and it starts on the highest of highs with taking me back in fear of the dawn before turning into kind of a mess for pretty much the entire middle of the album and i honestly think if he just wasn't so great at guitar it wouldn't even be that interesting at times but he is so it is um (laughs) sadly we heard the best the album had to offer with the singles in my opinion there's a few other tracks that I did like. I thought What's the Trick was good, Morning, Noon, and Night was good, but nothing left me as impressed as like Taking Me Back or Fear of the Dawn. Overall, I thought it was okay. Probably a six or a seven. Taking Me Back's my favorite, but dying to know what you thought of this. All right. So um, Taking Me Back is also my standout. I gave it a, a six and a half or a seven, whatever you want to call it. Um, okay. So I like every other of Jack's projects, right? I, I liked Lazaretto. I didn't like, what was the boarding house? Boarding house House reach. Reach. Terrible album. Didn't like that. I liked this. Didn't hate this one at all. Um, so we've got a lot of good riffs and a lot, uh, and uh, even a few like fucking great riffs. Um, like you said, he's an incredible guitarist and that is, uh, really the only thing he can really say. (laughs) I guess it feels like know. it's a means to an end at times on this album. I, I did enjoy it. Um, I didn't, I, I, I'm always like cautious when I enter a Jack White album. Um, because like Same. I said, I, I only, I only like every other one of his projects. I mean, you can say I like every other one of these songs even, and that would probably ring true. Um, here's the deal <laughs> though. Um, the white Raven, did that sound yes. familiar to you at all? Not off the top of my head, but why should it? 
Uh, I'm pretty sure he stole or I I, I don't know. Man. Interpolated. It's, it is definitely a tool riff. That opening riff that obviously doesn't that honestly doesn't even have anything else to do with the other the rest of the song because that song is incredible. Like the the riffs are fucking great, but he opens with and I forget the tool song because I'm not a tool head. But you're not a tool. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. Um, but it sounds it sounds very much like that. And I'm not going to accuse him of plagiarism here, but I, I think I think it is very similar. I mean, it could be parallel thought and. You could be right, honestly, but I'll have to go back and listen. You'll have to find what tool song it is and let me know. I will. I'll I think it it's on, I think it's on Fear Inoculum too, because it it just it sounds so familiar, man. It's really wild. oh recent tool. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's interesting. Well, I'll have to dive a little bit further into that. But I'm like you. I, I enjoyed the album more than I didn't. Thought it was much better than Boarding House Reach, but still not not going to be one of my albums of the year, probably. Yeah, probably not. Okay, man, let's move on. We got the Linda Linda's debut album, Growing Up. So I just think it's really hard not to root for these girls, man. After going viral with their performance of Racist Sexist Boy in their school library and getting a record deal with Epitaph, we finally get their debut LP. And I think it's pretty damn good, honestly. Like, they prove a lot of things on this album. Most importantly, like, they prove they're more than just viral sensations. They, the song they went viral from performing is actually far from the best song on the album, in my opinion. Right. But like the whole album's very rudimentary and straightforward punk rock, but I love it. Like it's no frills. It, they feel like kind of the runaways for a new generation. It's really cool. I gave it a seven out of ten. O was my standout, but they just did a, a tiny desk as well. Please throw that in the show notes because <laughs> that's, that's really good. Yeah, oh, and they so did good. it in the LA library. It's really cool. Oh, that's awesome. Um, yeah, man. Rudimentary, self-explanatory, straightforward punk rock. Welcome to Epitaph Records. We make awesome <laughs> music. Um, oh, it always blows my mind that the the guy who is a professor and also the front man of Bad Religion runs Epitaph Records. I still just love that. Um, yeah. So I really liked this album. It's incredibly fun. Um, I really hope they continue to make music for forever. Uh, I think Growing Up was actually my favorite of these. Dude, that's a great song. I, it's a good song. I just can't believe they're fucking 12 to 17 years old. That's insane. Really <laughs> They've is, done man. more by that age than I've done my entire life. So congrats to them on this album because it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. Yeah. I think, yeah, you said it best. It's a good time. Um all right, man, let's move on to this new one from Omar Apollo called Ivory. Like, I had to rethink my review for this album like 10 times, to be honest with you, because <laughs> every time I listened to it, I felt differently about it. I loved it more or I didn't know what I thought about it more. Parts of it can be a little weird, but I think once I really got in the right headspace to enjoy it, I couldn't stop listening to it. I think his voice is beautiful, but I will admit the album feels so inspired by Frank Ocean's Blonde at times that it could also be viewed as derivative. I think he did a good job of making it his own, but I could see how others would have that criticism. No matter how you feel about it, Blonde was one of the biggest albums of the last decade and its inevitable influence on the next generation was always going to come, you know? Um, yeah. And yeah, I don't, I don't know. I've always been torn on how I feel about Blonde as an album and I'm similarly similarly torn on this album right now but as of now i'm loving it so i'm gonna give it an eight <laughs> and killing it killing me is still my favorite but who knows what tomorrow holds how are you feeling about this one as we speak <laughs> as we speak uh this album has a bunch of elements of music that i really like um in different spots of the album different like parts of the song of like each song had like elements that i liked but then I don't know, man. It just didn't hit me. Am I missing something? That's fair. Fra Frank, I feel the exact same way about Frank Ocean, though. And I honestly, I didn't put the comparison together because that that that's how I feel about Frank Ocean. And he has this huge following and, and incredible influence. And I'm totally, pr I'm probably just missing something. But um, yeah, it just it it's 
didn't really hit me. I gave it, I gave it a six. I didn't hate it, right? I, I did enjoy it, but I didn't, mm -hmm. uh, I didn't. It just didn't hit me that li that much. I really liked the track "Invincible." I think is my favorite on this listen throughout the album. Interesting. Okay. Um, I, uh, I will say though, his, um, he has a billboard. He's also playing in the desert this weekend. Um, yes. He has a billboard uh, on the I-10 that says heterosexuality can be cured. Come see Omar Apollo, which I thought was hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> that's Tamagotchi, man. That's, that's how it works. <laughs> oh man. That's, that's going to be a fun set. I'm definitely going to tune in if I can, if they're streaming that one, I think, it, yeah, it's a, it's a good album. It's very interesting. I've been coming around on Frank a little more. At least I always really liked his his mixtape and Channel Orange, but the Blonde era took me a while to get used to. Oddly enough, at the Tyler concert, while he was setting up, they played I think Self Control from Blonde, and like something about being in a, an area with twenty thousand people all singing that song made me like kind of realize the beauty to it. But that's not like a replicable experience for everybody, you know? So I don't know. I think his Frank Ocean's music and Omar Apollo, for that matter, are just artists you really have to not only be in like the headspace for, but like the physical setting for, I guess. That could be it. I mean, I was rushing around all week and, and just I, I was very busy all week. So um it uh, maybe I wasn't in the right headspace, but I have had experiences like that at concerts before. The most memorable one was at the used concert where they played uh, in love and death all the way through and having the entire venue sing along with you and the band. And it was, it, mm -hmm. it's, it's really a next level experience. The same thing happened with me at the, uh, to me at the Silverstein show I saw of them playing, discovering the waterfront front to back. And, uh, just having everybody know all of the words to all of the songs and have them be like some of your favorites is just, it's a very special experience. If anybody's listening and hasn't experienced that, go do that somehow. Yes. Yeah. Anniversary tours are the fucking best panic at the disco a fever. You can't sweat out you motherfuckers. Sorry. <laughs> um, I'm never going to let that go. I'm I was, never just, gonna I was let just talking about panic at the disco today. It drives me crazy, man. Were you talking about that album? Yeah, I, I actually said that we're, we're never going to get a piece of art like that ever again, which is something you and I no. have talked about. Um, no, never. I mean, you've got, <laughs> it, in order to make that album, it, number one, most of the songs are written about books. Um, and they're like obscure <laughs> books. And he somehow ties up like Invisible Monsters, for instance. He ties up the entire book, which is a chaotic clusterfuck of a book into a nice mm -hmm. little three and a half minute song puts a little bow on it and it's perfect like it completely encapsulates the book so well and god that's art it's just art man it's crazy you know what whenever i'm at like fye or barnes and noble they usually have that on vinyl and they usually have no other panic albums on vinyl <laughs> so that should tell you where their fan base still lies but all right we'll we'll table that because it will inevitably come up again <laughs> um all right let's move on to some more weird music here we got a new one from orville peck bronco are we gonna call this country I don't know. I don't know which. I think it's country. I, I, is it? Is it? Is yeah, it? Yeah, I think West, it is. Is I, it Western music? Because I think it might fit more into that Marty Robbins side of things than country nowadays. Because when you say country, people might think of like Brian and shit. I was thinking Marty Robbins when the first two chapters rolled out, but like the more I listen to him, the more I'm thinking it's Elvis. Oh, okay. I can see that. Like, I get a lot more Elvis from his voice than anything. But I'll I'll, I'll dive in. Um, I I enjoyed this album as much as I enjoyed the chapters themselves. It's all really really good songwriting, and his voice is incredible. I think it'd be easy to write him off as a gimmick, but he's proven far beyond that he's more than that. And I honestly think whatever the fuck you want to call it, him and Lil Nas X have brought more excitement to country music than anyone since probably like Taylor Swift's early years or that one time T-Pain went to the CMA CMAs wearing the big ass <laughs> chain that said big ass chain. That was one of my favorite moments. Um, <laughs> I, I don't think any of us had a gay cowboy wearing a mask that sounds like Elvis reincarnated on our bingo cards this century, but it's happened and I'm enjoying the shit out of it so far. Again, I ladies don't... and gentlemen, welcome to 2022. Yes. 
I, I don't have any skips on the album. My favorites are still Come On Baby Cry, The Curse of the Black and I, Daytona Sand. It's all really, really good. Um, I'm going to give this one an 8 out of 10. What yeah, about you? I give it an 8 out of 10. Honestly, you you said it all fucking perfectly. I really like it when he speeds up. I really like it when it slows down. I just I like all of it, man. It's all so good. It is it's really yeah. it's just it's just good music man and there's no and it, it's it's funny i was talking about uh i was talking about it on on the line the other day and um on the internet and i was like i don't i don't like modern country but orville peck is fucking amazing and it's it, it's true like it's this is modern country but it's not country i i can see elvis now like, like i see yeah i see where you're getting that um, I think the more you listen to it, the more you'll hear that now. But it, I mean, it's clearly rooted in Western music, as was Elvis, and as is just modern rock and roll too. It just predates it. <laughs> yeah, and this is a this is a fairly uh, ambitious uh, ambitious album at fifty three minutes. And I mean, even like towards the back end, I wasn't really getting too bored. I mean, Let Me Drown, City of Gold, um, Hexy Mountains. These are all on the back end of the album because he's got the vocal chops to do it. There, it's 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 it was it's a very good album I, I gave it an eight um i think my i didn't write my stand up my standout down because honestly like you said there's there, there's no skips bro uh yeah, i think it's a solid album uh i think i'm gonna go ahead and say the curse of the blackened eye yeah the note that he hits in that one and holds is fucking unreal Love it's a that. good one it's a good music one. video is great for that too <laughs> yes yes it is all right, let's move on, buddy. We got a new one from Sid that I've been waiting on called Broken Hearts Club. Let it rip. She, she might have the smoothest voice I've ever fucking heard, honestly. <laughs> like, there's this airy quality to it that I just love. It floats over these instrumentals, and she just has this confidence. She never tries to do too much. She never oversings. I love her melodies. It feels very like a modernized R&B modernized 90s r&b i guess i should say and her last solo album had much more of a trap feel to it it was a lot darker both sonically and aesthetically but she seems to be in a much different place mentally for this album there's not a ton of variety in terms of like the subject matter lyrically on this album but i think that's true for most r&b we we had a lot to cover this week so i've only listened to this one about three times so far but i've enjoyed it with every listen i've had so far i i don't really have any skips on it i don't think off the top of my head but there are a few songs like i couldn't remember much if you asked me about right now yeah i think the singles nailed it fast car and right track are still my standouts it's going to be a seven or an eight for me for sure um i'm curious to know what you thought though i loved it this is a really? great album i'm surprised you didn't like the lucky day album but you liked this one interesting I, I, in fact i don't like the lucky day feature on that song i don't i don't understand you but okay <laughs> keep, please 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 i loved it man i thought it was great dude the uh you're right she has such a great voice the production on this entire project is just immaculate uh we've got r&b there's some rap there's some down tempo it's just I, her vocals are just absolutely incredible man you're right she just kind of floats over the beat i was trying to articulate that and um you 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 hit the nail on the head there. Um, I liked I liked the singles right. Let's go fast car right track are good, but my my uh, standout is actually tie the knot. I kept going back to that oh, song. Oh, tie the knot's good. I kept yeah. just going back to that song, and I I just I couldn't get enough of it, man. I also listened because you're whole a romantic. Album. I mean, what can I say? <laughs> and this say? album also clocked in at under 40 minutes too i think that's part of why it's so fun to just like throw on and breeze through it's not a long-winded r&d album it moves along at a good pace no song overstays its welcome and they're all like kind of light and breezy yeah i gave it an eight fuck yeah man i'm, I'm happy that i found an r&d album you liked more than just casually that's awesome yeah this is great Fuck yeah, man. All right. Are you ready to talk about this new Vince Staples? I know I'm ready to free the homies. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God, dude. I, I can't stop listening to this. It's so like, good. I, just when I thought like this year couldn't get any better after Denzel, Conway, Sabo, we get fucking Vince not only dropping an album of the year contender, but what might be his best album yet big fish theory possibly still not really sure 
Uh, but not everyone's going to love this album. It's not full of bangers the same way Summertime 06 or Big Fish Theory were. They're still bangers. There will still be some goats, of course. But um, it is Vince after all. <laughs> there still uh, be some goats. <laughs> glad you picked that one up. Uh, <laughs> but Dang. it has a... <laughs> <laughs> it's a deep one. It's one of the uh, most goats. All right, continue. <laughs> it's a good one. Uh, it, this album just has a really different feel to it, man. I, I think if you're only listening to Vince Staples for bangers, then you're missing out. Because I think the more personal he gets, the more better he gets, in my opinion, at least. I feel like I usually know what to expect going into a Vince album. But when tracks like when Sparks Fly came on, I had to run it back like five, ten times to even comprehend what I was hearing. He never fucking strips things down like that. Um, that's one of my favorite songs on the album, if not my favorite. The production on it's incredible, but the production on the whole album is incredible. I love the groove him and Kenny Beats got into on their past few projects, but I feel like he's at his sharpest creatively when he has more than one color to paint with, I guess. Yeah. Not to say Kenny Beats is one note at all. He's one of my favorite producers and contributed some great beats to this album, but having the production by committee and having guys like mustard come in to mix up the vibe, I think made for a better listening experience and a more fleshed out one than his self-titled was. I, I don't know. This one might settle at a nine, but I'm going to give it a 10 right now, just because I honestly can't think of a single criticism that I had for it. And that's what a 10 should be. Um, I, yeah. Magic when sparks fly lemonade rose street, the whole album's phenomenal Paper again, cuts. 10 out of 10 paper cuts yes i think i think we should also clarify i and i'm sure i don't want to speak for you but you might feel the same when i give a 10 to an album i'm not saying study this in music class i'm saying <laughs> i could not possibly love this anymore not saying it's going to be historically significant at all <laughs> welcome to Felt brandon's like I should face clarify that <laughs> welcome to brandon's face uh where the reviews are subjected and the uh the points don't matter <laughs> <laughs> they, they just don't, man. I, I don't. I Welcome don't, to life. Nothing matters. I, I, I don't. I don't throw tens around, right? I'm not going to be like, yo, this exactly. Uh, this is this is a, this is a ten. Um, but I also don't. I don't also hold them as coveted as say a Fontana, right? So he, yes. uh, somebody was talking about how he gives tens out so sparingly, and 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 somebody on like some metal, some weird metal subreddit I was on was like, daughters, that, that their daughter. This is an album that. Fontano gave a 10 to and and it, and 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 it's so good and I listen to it and it's ass. It's just awful. So, I don't know what 10s really mean. He does like death grips. They're all Oh god. But no, I I respect his critical opinion. He no, can have whatever same. one he wants. But yeah, in terms of 10s, I I'm tens like don't you. I don't I don't like it when it's There's just different ways. People either do a 10 where they're comparing a new album against every album they've ever heard. Is this a 10 the same way Thriller is a 10? No. No. And that's not what I'm fucking saying. But it's a 10 to me. And you're listening to my review. So I'm giving you it how I feel, not how I think the general public will feel. Oh, right. Um, But I would love your review of this, Brandon. Please give it to me. All right. Number one, free the homies. This feels kind of like a victory lap from his self-titled, yet it's still just absolutely fucking incredible. It feels like it feels like the self-titled should have come out after this as a victory lap, kind of like Nas did last year. Um, yeah, I could see that. But uh, wow, when you make little baby sound so good, how can you not give the rate this so high? Um, <laughs> I, I like you. I have nothing but praise for this album it's incredible man we've got magic which is i mean a certified just fucking banger thank you mustard thank you vince um i mean when sparks fly is just incredible nameless you've got uh paper cuts which is a, one of the standouts for me um yeah pl- player ways <laughs> bang that's a banger dude there's not I a mean, bad song you can read them all there's not a bad song they're really good man it's all really good i i gave it a nine um but again, points don't fucking matter. But I, I gave it a nine no, because no. I, I highly, highly enjoyed it. And it might settle at a 10 for me. So we'll see. But there was no skips. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, dude. I, I fucking love that you loved this as much as I did. This, it was all I listened to on Friday. Man, like I, I honestly had to start like shaping my albums of the year just because I was like, this year is getting out. Like I can't even remember 
albums we reviewed in January already. And dear God, man, like we're we're truly blessed. I love doing this every week and having new albums to review. Right. This is fucking awesome. And I honestly think we're going through one of the best years in music history at this moment. Like I this mean, is unprecedented through this many months. We are two. We're not even thirteen days into quarter two. Like <laughs> yeah, no. And look at the playlist. This is insane multiple album of the year candidates in multiple categories just one weekend insane, just man. unreal all right man let's cap this week off with a really fun one you threw on here the other day from giselle Wu and the night owls called everything please tell me about the band and this album all right so uh giselle Wu and the night owls um are a band locally to the coachella valley um they kind of have all of the elements that i really like in music right now i mean we've talked about a lot of a lot of pop artists and even some rock artists that like throw some latin into their music and i think Mm -hmm. giselle Wu and the night owls do it very well um this this is this was a long time coming um i know the uh i think he's the guitarist and the drummer um and they um you know, they, they've been telling me that they've been working really hard on this and they were trying to release it. They're playing Coachella this weekend. They're probably going to open up the fest. Oh, you actually know these people. Yeah. Oh, shit, dude. They fucking shred. That's right? insane. That's, <laughs> right? that's awesome. I, th- I think they're really know. good, man. Uh, they, uh, they're, 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 I, I, I really thought this album was great. Um, the second it came on, I texted you. I was like, is it too late to add an album? It's Monday night. Um, What's really funny is I texted Christian from this band and I I was like, hey, man, your album's awesome after I listened to it. He goes, it's out. I thought that was hilarious. (laughs) That's Uh, fucking great. Uh, Man, I love this. Dude, holy shit. That's incredible. I didn't know you actually knew them. That's awesome. Yeah. I mean, we're not we're not super close or anything, but I, I, you know, we we saw them at uh, Casuela's Cafe in 2019. And uh, I think they had just like announced the 2020 Coachella lineup and um, or something along those lines. Were they playing the rock stuff, too? Yeah. Oh shit! Wow, it, it was like yeah, the it was like late night. cafe crowd. It. Oh yeah, I forget they have that like whole area over there now. That's oh, dude, right, they, that like whole patio area. They remodeled it's that giant. place like crazy. Yeah, um, <laughs> I went there once before moving. Yeah, yeah, it's they remodeled it like crazy. But there was like late night, man. I mean, there was da- there was dancing. We had drinks with them afterwards. They're, they're all really cool people. But uh, regarding the music, I I really really liked this album. Um, I think I liked. Um, sunny days the best i think that i think that was my standout i i gave it a seven man i really really enjoyed this album yeah i i honestly didn't listen to it enough times yet to rate i think i told you i only listened to it about one one and a half times wasted every time the intro just fucking gets me i love that song uh but like you said her voice in spanish is fucking beautiful man they're they're a great. great band and i i did not know that they were just like even a local desert band they should be like the house band for Pappy and Harriet's. They're so right? fucking good. Like make them the opener for everyone. Golden Paul McCartney's voice, in town. Throw them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. Um, that's fucking awesome, man. Thanks for throwing this on. I'm definitely going to be listening to it more because I did enjoy everything I heard from it. Yeah, you needed to hear it and we needed to, to talk about it. They have a uh, fairly popular song um, for band of their caliber on uh, Spotify. It's got 40,000 hits. Uh, it's called Coachella Gold, which is incredible. But I really think that this album eclipses um, that that single. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm glad you enjoyed it. Fuck yeah, man. Well, that wraps up our singles and now our albums. Do you want to know what we have to look forward to this week? Let's talk about it. All right, man. So we're going to be throwing some new singles from Interpol on, new one from Lizzo on, new one from State Champs on, a new one from Craig David on. And we have new albums from Swedish House Mafia and Marion Hill, which should be fun. Hey, are you a Craig Uh, David fan? I am a giant Craig David fan. You want to talk about some Craig David? (laughs) Um, Next week I do. Uh, if we only have two albums, I'm sure we're going to have more than this, but if we only have two, maybe we'll throw a classic or two on. 
Yeah, I have a uh, I have a whole list of things that I want to throw on. We're actually going to be listening to a uh, listening to a uh, an EP that I'm going to throw on um, that I just uh, listened to the lead single off of uh, from a band called. Give me one second. It's called Unchain the Spineless, a new deathcore band that I discovered today, which I'll throw on uh, as soon as we're done with this here playlist or this here podcast, rather. That is the most Brandon wrap up to a show I've ever heard. Unchain the spineless next week. You guys fucking heard it. All right. On that note, I'm out. Free the homies. Peace. Dead homies.